Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Finding time when I'm not crazy busy with work this week. Oh god, it's so busy. So much to do. Anyway, what am I going to do today for today's video? I wanted to talk about the fact that uh, I wanted to look at the upcoming Fago collab that's coming, which is the collab with the Waltz in the Moonlight game. AKA the mobile the mobile the release game dancing game which is the reason why Fago is no longer allowed on Kuap anymore cuz Kuap originally released with a limited amount of people were able should have been able to download it and Kuap said like nah you can just unlimited download it from us and then Fago sent them a cease and desist to get to get our shit off of your platform and since then, they've never been allowed <laughs> back on. Uh, at least as far as I could tell. I don't know if they ever were allowed back in there. But anyway, that's the collab. I wanted to talk about it because it is coming up. It's coming up sometime in mid-April. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, tell me what you're looking forward to in it, and let's go. So yeah, this starts mid-April. The middle of April is the 15th. So I don't know if it actually starts on the 15th, but that's literally the middle of April. There's no way of denying it. April ends on the 30th. <laughs> the middle of April's the 15th. <laughs> but maybe they just mean the idea of middle of April. But anyway, this is going to be what the Grail Live looks like. You see here. Uh, the things that are going to be included in it. I'm just going to very quickly go over some of it. The costume dresses, which we've got Mash getting a costume dress, we got Helena getting a costume dress, Altera, Naito, Maeve, uh, Serenity, Tamamo, Uriel, Shuten, Nero, Ushiwakamaru, and Jean. They're all getting spirit dresses, and you'll only be able to get them for this event, so make sure to do it. I think eventually you do get a way to unlock these dresses somewhere else, but it's... It, I, just get it here while you're playing this event. Uh, the only thing that you need to acquire to actually play it is Fuyuki. So not too bad. Mm, in terms of the event info, I think we have the free-to-play welfare unit is going to be Mysterious Idol X Alter. This is how the event schedules kind of kind of look like. Uh, where it's the basic thing. Where it's like, oh yeah, we don't start. And then eventually, a couple days later... We unlock everything and then you're good to go. Continue from there. You know, the basic thing. Every Fago event is basically like that. This is going to be the event. Oh, it looks like it's one of the... Oh, man, that's annoying. It's going to be a point. Again, I usually don't really know that much about events because I like playing them for myself when they come up. So I'm actually experiencing for the first time <laughs> what kind of event it actually is. It looks like it's a point-based. Uh, with a lot of other mechanics that it's got going on here as well. Idle points and stuff like that. Event rewards. We have the CE, which features the other units on here that were not picked to get a costume, which is Okita, Jean Alter, and uh, Skahawk. I always thought that this CE looks like Okita's pointing at her belly and like doing like a burp thing. It's not that. Apparently, she's singing from the diaphragm, which I had no idea. The event award CC are the Anti-Saber Final Armament, and Grave Deal uh, card deals 20% extra damage against the Saber class. Meteoric Bellows inflict burn status 500 HP 3 turns when attacking with the Engraved card, and the Engraved card has 50% critical Sora Star Absorption. And the Idle Hat, which removes one crit chance up from a target upon attacking with the Engraved card, then gain one star. And then finally, we have the Summoning Campaign that, go in, that goes in there. Which is the one, is Miss Crane is the new one. And then I think on Summoning Campaign 2, yeah, it's just literally these. I'm going to be interested to see how they do, if there's going to be any change for the NA one. Uh, I doubt it, but yeah. For this one, I will at least just focus on the two new ones, which is just Miss Crane and um, Mysterious Heroine uh, X Forner, the other one. <laughs> Idol X, there you go. Uh, for the other ones, when the actual banner's coming out, I'll probably do something separate to talk about them and stuff like that. But anyway... Uh, oh yeah, here's the Grail Live Limited Craft Essences, which is Flower sun Sunshine. Arts up 10%, Buster 10% up, which features a Shgargle and Ishtar over here. 
Caldea Stars, which is, features some boys up here. Star Crit, a star plus 10, art plus 3%, and gain 5%. And then we have Camelot Lessons, which is very nice looking at some Camelot units. And it's just damage cut minus 100 and then buster up 3%. So really nice art. Don't really see any use in terms of what they actually do, but... I feel like that's a vast majority of CEs that usually are only helpful in very weird circumstances. Uh, but anyway, let's go look. Oh yeah, there she is. Okay, so we'll start with Miss Crane. We have Miss Crane. Here you go. She's a caster. She has three arts. One buster, one quick. Active skill, first skill, a lady affection for garments EX, grants party invincibility except self for one turn, increases party crit star absorption rate except for self for three turns, gain crit stars based on the number of costume only allies except for self, star rate is 100% when it's at level 10, and costume owning star plus is 10 and the cooldown is 5. The second skill is a one knight coat B, charges on MP gauge, deals 2000 damage without killing the self. 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies or to party except for self by 300% for 3 turns. NP up is at level 1 is 50% and then at level 10 it's just straight up 100% NP up which is very nice. A thousand years gratitude A. Increases one ally's critical star absorption for 3 turns. Increases their critical damage for 3 turns. Grants some instant kill immunity for 3 turns. Deals a thousand damage without killing the self demerit. And then 500% absorption at level 10 and crit damage is 50% at level 10. Passive skills are Territory Creation Altillier C+, which is just an increase to own arts performance by 7%, and an increase to crit star generation rate, and then item construction Close A, which is an increased party received buff success rate when... Increases party received buff success rate by 10% while self is on the field, including sub-members. There you go. Our third append skill is a bonus against rulers, uh, which is funny. Noble Phantasm is the perfect beauty without flaw, the crane's great, great full song of parting. Can only be used when there are 20 crit stars or more. Increases the first ally's attack except self for 3 turns. Increases their MP damage by 30% for 3 turns. Moves self to last reserve slot. Can only be can only move if there are 2 other members left in the field. Um, the attack up at level 1 is 20%. <laughs> and then charges first ally's MP gauge uh, except for self. It's 30% NP Charger, and then some notes on it. After moving, the servant who comes out is the leftmost one in the sub-slot. Unlike order change, the position change will reset the deck, so it becomes the first turn of a new command card cycle. Ooh, that's key to learn. And yeah, that's what she is. This is Miss Crane. I think she's kind of neat. I've always thought that this kit was kind of cool. I don't know how the overall... It's very weird to be a caster that buffs something that is not one of the 50 percenters. Uh, the one that doesn't specifically buff Buster, Arts, or Quick. They tend to be a little bit forgotten for the most part, I want to say. Um, but I don't know. I've always liked the idea of Mrs. Crane's kit. I just don't know. She's just releasing at a terrible time, man. She's coming out at a time where it's just like, I can't justify summoning for her. But honestly, I do kind of want her just to kind of mess with, um, with her with stuff specifically. Do I think she's probably one of the best units in the world? I actually don't know. But I do want to kind of mess with that kit. That's good enough for me for the most part. And I think she looks neat. And I think she also has a specific buff related to due to wear costumes as well. Uh, which I forgot what it was... Yeah, for costume money, it's the first one, duh. I don't know, I kind of like the idea of it. <laughs> it's a very weird unit that is under very specific circumstances in which she is used, but I think that's cool. And honestly, I don't mind it too much. A lot of people tend to focus on like the basic kind of type of units, but I think this is a very different kind of unit, and I think it's neat. I just wish she had released it maybe a better time, so... Uh, unfortunate, but hey, what can you do? Next, let's look at the free unit, which everyone can get it. That's right, it comes free with your Forgo event. Mysterious Idol X Altar, which is a free uh, foreigner. Her first skill is Superb Round Dancing B. Increases on quick performance for three times, three turns. Increases on buster performance three times, three turns. Grants self evasion for one attack, three turns. Quick up is 30%, buster up is 30%, and the cooldown is five stars. Five stars, dumb. Five turns. 
Infinite Upstream Lyric C increases on crit damage for one turn, increases on damage against mechanical enemies for three turns, 100% up crit damage, and then versus mechanical foes, it's 50% up. It cooldown is four, that's nice. King Singing C increases own party's attack for th increases party's attack for three turns, recovers party's HP, 20% attack up, and 2,000 heal. And cooldown is five, not, not too bad. Passive skill, existence that's out of the domain D, increases crit stars uh, by getting two crit stars every turn, and then increase own debuff resistance by 4%. Madness Enhancement C, and Ultra Reactor B. And the third skill is a bonus against oh, it's anti berserker. That's funny. And a noble phantasm is a quick uh, AOE. It is luminous, melodious, tyrannical blade. It hits four times with quick, deals damage to all enemies, and deals an additional 100%, 150% extra damage against enemies with the evil alignment. And it's because she is a free to play unit, your damage is going to be at a thousand. And then the increase to quick performance, if you're overcharged, is 20% at level one. And then if you get it all the way to the final level, it's 40%. So that's cool. I like the cut of her look. I like the way she looks. I like what she's doing. She is quick, and I am mostly arts focused at this point, but I'm not too shy to use a quick unit when the time comes because I have a box set up for that. And she is a free unit. And one of the worst things about dealing with quick for the most part is that they don't, <laughs> if they don't do a lot of hits in this specific department, they kind of need to make up for it in pure damage just so that they can kill quicker on the first hit so they can start gaining MP, MP gain. So it is kind of nice that she gets a free level five, so she kind of gets help with that a little bit. But I don't know, she seems cool. It's funny that this is an anti-unit um, noble phantasm that hits everyone. And then, yeah, if you're fighting against the evil alignment, this also opens up some fun stuff with Moriarty, because Moriarty can turn everyone evil, I believe. Let me see, where is he? Where is Moriarty? How is he not here? How are you? Is he not? He's, is he lawful evil? Neutral evil? Chaotic evil? He's evil, right? What the my, am I just blind? There he is. Okay. <laughs> there he is. I was like, I know you're evil, motherfucker. Okay, there you go. Yes, he grants party evil alignment for self for three turns. Uh, except self for three turns. No, that's granting the party. Oh, no, no. His noble phantasm doesn't, doesn't it? Now, who's the guy who turns someone, everyone evil? Maybe I'm misremembering. Oh, no, no, no. That's the increase of evil. Maybe I am just misremembering how certain- I could have swore there was a dude who turned everyone evil. If you know what I'm talking about, feel free to tell me, because maybe I'm just blanking it, because I'm too just, like, not thinking because of work. But anyway, I think she's cool, and she's free, and she looks cool. I think that's good enough for a free unit, to be honest. <laughs> so I'll gladly take her, and I'll gladly raise her up. I love, um... Mysterious Heroine X, and, uh, I've always been very sad that I- was never actually able to use her single target very much just because I don't there wasn't very much use for her when I had her. I got her too late um, in the game for me to really justify ever using her. But I'll gladly use this one. This one seems cool. And yeah, that's basically the event that's coming up. Uh, I will go over specific banner stuff with the other dudes when the time comes because otherwise this video is just going to be stupid long. Uh, when the actual date gets announced and I'll talk about them there. And yeah, oh yeah, there's also going to be Server Strengthens for Mysterious Heroine X Altar and Naito and Hassan and Queen Maeve. So that's all cool. I can't wait to do it. It looks like it's going to be a fun time. I usually always have... Oh, points kind of suck. I'm not going to lie. It being <laughs> points related is kind of a downer, downer for me. Because those are always the hardest to grind last minute. But, uh, you know, if I stay up on it, I'm sure I'll be able to do it no problem. But yeah, that's the Grail Life. I can't wait for it to happen whenever it shows up in mid-April. Whenever that happens. And yeah, that's it for today's video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy for go grinding. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.